watching IGN Live. PC gaming is thriving and better than ever. Who here is a PC gamer? Yeah. So with me, I've got some experts to discuss the future of PC gaming. We've got the founder of Digital Foundry, Richard Ledbetter. Hey. Cheers. And from NVIDIA, we've got Jacob Freeman and Guillermo Simon. So thank you very much for coming to IGN Live. We've seen a huge leap in technology in recent years, thanks to the advancements and innovations in PC gaming. Uh, things like DLSS upscaling, some of the amazing things happening with AI. So I'm curious about how we're feeling about the next kind of big evolution and where you kind of see everything going. Uh, we've got some new shiny toys coming up soon. We've got a lot of amazing things that you guys are doing with uh, ways to help gamers. So what do you see as kind of the next kind of five years looking like? Well, there's definitely a, a lot to talk about there. Uh, if we start with, we can start with uh, something pretty simple, um, like lighting in games, you know? Um, if you look at uh, full ray traced lighting or path traced lighting, it's, it's actually not, it's, it's not a relatively new concept in the world of computer graphics. You know, it's been, it's been done in CG for a long time. But what is, uh, what is new is uh, ray tracing for, for gaming. Yeah. You know, it's, it's really the holy grail of lighting. And uh, the way that you light a game really impacts uh, how realistic it looks, how the reflections look. Uh, you know, a lot of people think of ray tracing, they think of it as reflections, which is that's definitely a part of it. But uh, when it comes to full ray tracing, there's a lot more, uh, you know, if you just look around the room, you know, you see the way that uh, light interacts with objects, uh, the way it bounces off objects, all impacts how uh, realistic it looks. And because of the advances in not only hardware, but in, um, for example, in AI and games, DLSS, frame generation, has really made it possible to be able to do that at 60 FPS plus, which we, uh, which we really weren't able to before. Yeah, yeah, I think it's really important to point out how difficult this is. Um, NVIDIA put out the first ray tracing hardware in 2018. And, uh, you know, my colleague Alex is really into this. He just couldn't believe the presentation because he just didn't think it was kind of possible. Mm. But since then, it's just kind of come on leaps and bounds because developers just really love the technology. And um, there's a huge amount of research being done that just makes it faster and faster. So in 2018, we couldn't believe that ray tracing was going to be on a consumer level graphics card, right? But in um, you know, now we've got like path tracing, which is like the ultimate form of, of ray tracing running in a game like Cyberpunk 2077, which I just couldn't quite believe that it was possible even at, at, at that time that happened. I mean, I heard some rumors from you guys that possibly something might be happening to get excited about, but I couldn't quite conceive that was happening. So there's a lot of stuff that's going on in the future of gaming, whether you're talking about ray tracing, whether you're talking about AI, whether you're talking about stuff like upscaling and frame generation, where we're, at the, we're in the Wild West now. This is like, the, the astonishing thing is we're kind of like in first slash second gen stuff. So this is just the beginning, really. It's just, it's just quite remarkable, really. Yeah, and, and kind of like what, what we were talking about earlier, you know, we're relatively in the early stages of seeing full ray tracing in, in games. So I think the, what we're going to see a pretty big turning point um, if we haven't already, you know, in the very near future. Yeah, and you mentioned cyberpunk there, and I know we have some cyberpunk fans in the house, so <laughs> they yep. know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> As a bit of a nerd, I'm fascinated by AI, and I know you really uh, you revealed G Assist at Computex. So from the outside, that just looks like, oh, this is going to help gamers. It's a new way to get game help. But could you? I know there's more to it. Could you explain that? Yeah, sure. So um, as you explained, it's essentially an assistant to help gamers with different things. So for example, at Computex, we had two use cases. One of them was an assistant that would help with game-specific guidance. So in this case, it was with Arc Survival Ascended. So it was questions about how you would craft a particular item or how you would defeat a particular boss. Um, so that was one part of the use case. And the other one was, 
with just how configurable PC gaming can be. Um, asking the assistant about how to extract maximum performance and efficiency from your rig. Um, and so those are sort of the two use cases that we saw. Um, in general, I think that it, it, it will change the way that we engage with our apps. Um, I don't think that this would be constrained to just gaming. Of course, we, we see this in other aspects today, but gaming is often the very first uh, use case that gets AI adoption. We saw this with DLSS. You know, it, yeah. When was it? Like seven years ago. It was, in my opinion, the first widely deployed AI for gaming, and now Definitely, it's sort of yeah. become the, the standard for it. And so, yeah, I mean, it, I should say that it's, it's a tech demo today, um, but it's intended to showcase a vision for how developers or the community could build assistants like these that would help for different tasks. And of course, we're collecting feedback and excited to see what developers might do with it if it becomes anything more than a tech demo in the near future. Yeah. And Richard, I know you live and breathe PC gaming specs. So how do you see something like GSS changing the way that just a normal nerd like me might well, interact with their games? Um, there's a scene in like Star Trek IV where Mr. Scott needs to use the computer. And he picks up the mouse and goes, hello, computer. <laughs> and uh, you know, he doesn't quite understand that a mouse is a completely different interface. But this is exactly kind of what GeoSyst is. It's a, it's a different way of talking to, to, to the computer to actually get the information you want, talking to it in a conversational way um, to access features and to kind of get the information you want. And I'm, I'm kind of interested in it because um, you know, we, at DF, we do like optimized settings, which is like the best balance of um, bang for the buck, to, you know, for the best gaming experience. So, you know, why not just ask G Assist or, or some other AI assistant, you know, can you optimize this game to run best on my hardware? So, yeah, I think it's, it's really interesting to see uh, what you can do with it and also the stuff that it can give you because it's got so much access to information under the hood right. that you just don't typically have generally as a user. So yeah, it's really interesting stuff. Yeah. The other thing that you guys have shown off recently which looked incredible was the ACE technology. Yeah. It, I saw a lot of incredible looking kind of human faces. How will we see that affect games? Yeah, I mean, Ace really is very, very cool. Um, it's For those unaware, it's essentially NVIDIA's initiative to make AI and PCs possible. There's a lot of moving parts. Generally, the way it works is a game developer would go to one of NVIDIA's partners, like InWorld AI, and what they do is it, they essentially host the engine or the back end for how these AI and PCs are designed, and so it, there would be essays worth of a particular character's backstory, what motivates them, the triggers that make, might make them take action, um, all of these sorts of things. And then what NVIDIA is providing is all the models that would essentially bring them to life. So things like um, you know, speech recognition, speech to text, it, something we called audio to face, which is um, how the NPC's face animates when they speak. Um, and it's tied to the phonetics. So it doesn't matter what language they speak. It's, uh, at, at Computex, we had a multilingual agent. Uh, you could speak into it uh, in Mandarin. It would come back in English. And of course, there's several other languages. But it doesn't matter what language they speak, the facial animations, which, by the way, it takes a lot of developer work um, to get right. Um, you know, it, it's, it's just accurate. Um, and so with Covert Protocol and, and some of the other examples, we had some examples of how AI NPCs will uh, you know, essentially enhance the experience. You might imagine like an RPG um, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've, uh, I've demoed this a lot of times in, uh, at trade shows, and people's minds are really blown by it. You know, for the longest time when we've interacted with NPCs in games, you know, it's Usually, like, you have a few options, and then, you know, they have a set of responses. But this really changes completely the way that you interact with an NPC. You can ask, you can ask it anything. You can ask, tell, tell me a joke. You can say, what's the weather outside? I mean, literally anything. But the, the character will stay in this story right. because they have a background. They have a story written for them. 
Um, so it actually is pretty pretty amazing to uh, to be able to interact I with. I feel like I yeah. feel like to a similar extent to how games change from 2D to 3D, um, it's eventually going to be one of those things where it's either going to reinvent current genres or it's probably going to create new ones that we can't think of right. um, yeah. today. But you know, with some creative developers. I think we're on board for some really interesting experiences. Yeah, what's exciting for me, from my perspective, is this is first-gen stuff. Like This is like early tech demos that we're seeing at the moment. And so sky's the limit once this really takes off. And um, I'm thinking you know, other things, for example, let's imagine a game like GTA 6, for example. Well, they've already... They've, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they've, They've already got really advanced um, systems for controlling the behavior of all of the, the people in the city, right? You know, they go about their day, they drink their coffee, they put their umbrellas up when it rains, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, imagine that powered by AI and imagine being able to have all of this conversational stuff in there. You know, imagine a game like Hitman, for example, where the whole gameplay is, is, is kind of based on what's happening in the environment in a particular context. It's about gaining information, you know, adding that extra level of interaction with AI. You know, it's just going to take things to a, a different level. So what we're seeing now is really interesting. But, you know, I'm just thinking like five, ten years from now, where, where is it going to end up? It's going to be completely different. That's kind of why I'm still in, the, you know, in this particular industry, because there's... There's just new surprises happening all the time. It's a really exciting time right now. Yeah. We're seeing a real rebirth as well of kind of handheld gaming, which, uh, you know, in the past hasn't really been able to keep up with PC gaming in terms of, you know, the looks or the performance. How do you see these technologies like DLSS and things like that? Do you think we'll start to see those in the handheld market? And, and what could those kind of technologies do on those smaller machines? Right. Well, I can't speak specifically for the handheld market, but uh, for DLSS, for example, you know, it, it was originally introduced as uh, six years ago, I think, right? Um, so relatively new, and uh, it was a way to essentially get better performance by using uh, by uh, rendering at a lower resolution and then using an AI-based upscaler to uh, to match or exceed your target resolution. And so it actually has evolved. Um, like, like, just like you know, a lot of the AI technology we're talking about has evolved rather quickly. So uh, we had DLSS, you know, which is super resolution, and then we introduced frame generation, which is actually using AI to generate an entire frame, significantly improving performance. And a lot of the stuff that we talked about today, like path tracing and you know, uh, AI NPCs, a lot of it would actually not be possible without these technologies yeah. to run at a 60 FPS plus experience. More recently, uh, we introduced in DLSS 3.5 a feature called ray reconstruction. And uh, what that does is essentially improve the image quality, once again by using AI, <laughs> uh, improve the image quality of a ray traced image uh, by replacing the denoiser in the game engine with an AI based denoiser uh, with virtually no performance impact whatsoever. So uh, not only is DLSS improving the performance of games, adding more visual features, enabling things like ray tracing, you know, it's also making the image quality uh, look more realistic and better uh, as it's doing that. Yeah. I mean, handhelds switch to, these guys can't talk about it, but you know, it's going to be coming. And if DLSS isn't in it, I'll be very surprised. So yeah, I'd expect, I'd expect to see deployment of all AI technologies, like everything from super high end to handhelds, you know, when the time is right. Um, yeah, so again, I mean, I guess the, the great thing about all of this is how scalable it is. You know, you, d you don't expect like 4K super high end visuals on a handheld, but, you know, technologies like DLSS can definitely play a part you know, the lower down the stack you go. Yeah. Yeah, so these guys can't talk about it, but <laughs> would you guys be interested in a Nintendo Switch that could do kind of real high performance? <laughs> just as a little, just so you know. <laughs> Got it. Uh, and tell me as well a little bit about DLAA, because I think people confuse that in DLSS a lot, and it's, yeah. You know, so uh, like I mentioned before, DLSS is uh, rendering the game at a lower resolution and then using AI-based upscaler to render it at a 4K-like or even better in a lot of cases uh, than, the, than the 4K native image. DLAA is taking the native 
resolution and then applying, applying AI-based anti-aliasing on top of it. So uh, basically, it's, it's the ultimate in image quality. If you don't like to see a single jagged edge in your game, <laughs> then <laughs> DLA is the best way to uh, basically eliminate all of that. Yeah, basically, um, yeah, anti-aliasing, right? I mean, if you don't have anti-aliasing, you have this really sort of horrible jagged image. Yeah. And, um, DLSS actually is an anti-aliaser as well as an upscaler. Right. But yeah. you know, if you can devote all of its resources to just anti-aliasing image at native resolution, you get like super pristine quality. So it's basically, you know, the, inherent, the, the, the nature of PC gaming is how inherently scalable it is. So if you've got the performance you know, yeah. sitting in your GPU and you want to use that for like um, better image quality, higher levels of anti-aliasing, as opposed to you know, going above the refresh rate of your monitor, you've got that GPU power to spare to just make the games look a lot better. So Yeah, and that's one of the great things about PC gaming. You know, as you, uh, you know, upgrade or if you want to play older games, you, know, you can apply things like DLAA to older games um, if you're obviously, if you have great performance already and get even better image quality than you had a few years ago. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the many things that's great about PC gaming. And just as a last question, because we are running out of time, even though I know we could talk about this stuff for hours, uh, is just kind of, if each of you could give me kind of one of the technologies and which part of it you're most excited about in the games you play. Who wants to go first? Hmm. I'll go. So I, uh, for me, it's, I would say it's, it's lighting in games. We talked a lot about path tracing and full ray tracing. And actually, I credit lighting in gaming as uh, what initially got me interested in and in, in, into this industry was seeing Quake 2. Uh, they call it colored lighting back then, yeah. I think, uh, with, uh, in 3D accelerated mode. And I was just blown away. And I really feel like we're at that point again with, uh, with full ray tracing or path tracing. Um, that, and that, that personally gets me very excited because I, I really feel, you know, lighting is, 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 is how we see the world. You know, it's, it's, it's the best way to, uh, to, to emulate our real world is by uh, more realistic lighting. So, so yeah, for me, I'm, I'm excited about all the, all the path trace and full ray trace games coming. <laughs> Uh, I don't know where to begin. I can't put it down to one. Yeah, the, the path tracing, the lighting, it's just um, totally transformative, but it's incredibly uh, heavy on resources. But the cost of that is getting lower and lower the further we move on with new technology. But equally, how well developers are using that technology. There's a thing called Restir, which is for path tracing, which has made stuff like cyberpunk path tracing possible. It's just like quite astonishing, really, when you see it. I mean, there's, there's so much going on. Unreal Engine 5, for example, um, obviously, that's scalable across a lot of technologies. But you know, stuff like Nanite, this ultra high detail. And obviously, you know, the, the better the hardware you've got, the, the, more scalability, the more scalable it is, the better results you get, the higher the performance. That really excites me. There's, there's so much going on. And um, you know, well, I'm going to have to let Guillermo have a go, because I yes, know you could absolutely. go. Absolutely. I could be here all day. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for me, the wish list is long also. As a competitive player, give me 1,000 frames per second, give me 1,000 <laughs> hertz of refresh rate, five milliseconds of latency. Um, but I think to me, in terms of what's near future, it's probably AI NPCs and how they're going to change uh, yeah. the way we engage with our favorite titles today and um, bring about some new genres that I can't really Imagine yep. today? Yeah. No, I, for one, welcome our new AI overlords. So. <laughs> so there you have it, a glimpse into the potential future of PC gaming. Thank you so much for joining us. We've got lots more ahead right here on IGN Live. And uh, yeah, thank you again. That was great. Thank you.